Hello, I'm Dr. Marla Shapiro, and I'm on the board of the International Menopause Society, and today I'm joined by Dr. Louise Newsom. Welcome, Louise, and please introduce yourself to our audience. Hi, so I'm Dr. Louise Newsom. I'm a GP and menopause specialist in the UK. So today we're going to talk about cardiovascular disease, because certainly as menopause practitioners, we know that this is so significant. While women worry about breast cancer and other diseases, they don't recognize often how prevalent cardiovascular disease is. So let's first talk about cardiovascular disease and menopause. Does it increase with the menopause? Absolutely, it does. And it's something that a lot of people don't realize. So women are more protected from cardiovascular disease before the menopause. And obviously, the thing that changes during the menopause is, is estradiol levels. We know that women are less likely to have a heart attack before the menopause. And after the menopause, the increase is by about a factor of five. We also know that women who do have heart attacks actually present in a slightly different way, so less um, classical um, way of presenting with a heart attack, but also they're more likely to die. So the, even though the, the risk increases, but then actually the risk of death from a heart attack increases in a postmenopausal woman compared to a man of a similar age. And can we differentiate the risk between early menopause and then those women who really qualify for premature ovarian failure? Yeah, so we know that if women have an early menopause or if they have premature ovarian insufficiency, so they are less than the age of 40, the longer they have without estrogen, the greater their risk is. So we also know if women have both their ovaries removed, so have a bilateral refractory, they have an accelerated biological age and they have a, a great increased risk of cardiovascular disease. Um, a lot of women, as you say, are more scared about HRT but they don't realize that this risk without having HRT is actually very detrimental to their body. So let's talk about the use of menopausal hormone therapy and whether or not it protects from cardiovascular disease. Yeah, so this can be very confusing, can't it, for physicians as well as for healthcare, for all healthcare professionals, but also for patients and women as well. Because actually, if you Google um, HRT, it will say increased risk of cardiovascular disease on a lot of sites. And as you know, there are different types, there are different doses of HRT. We know from the evidence that if women start taking HRT within 10 years of the menopause, so this so-called window of opportunity, then women have a lower cardiovascular disease risk. Cochrane data has shown that the mortality risk for cardiovascular disease reduces by 70, about 70%, and the risk of cardiovascular disease reduces by about 50%. Relative risk reduction, but they're still good numbers. If you compare the benefit of using a statin or a blood pressure lowering drug for primary prevention of cardiovascular disease and compare that with the numbers for risk reduction taking HRT, then the one that wins actually is HRT, which is quite surprising because certainly in the UK, we give a lot of statins, we give a lot of um, hypertensive medication, quite rightly so, to reduce primary um, primary prevention of cardiovascular disease. We should really be thinking of HRT. And as you know, before the WHI study, it, we used to prescribe it all the time, really to reduce risk of cardiovascular disease. In the UK, 26% of deaths are related to cardiovascular disease. You know, it's a big killer. We have a treatment that reduces risk of cardiovascular disease, as well as other diseases, as you know. So it's really important that we change the narrative and really think carefully about why we're we giving HRT and also why we're refusing it inappropriately often to a lot of women. Yeah, it's very interesting because you're right. Before the WHI, we did think of HRT or menopausal hormone therapy as being cardiovascular protective. Yet we seem to have lost that indication. We no longer use menopausal hormone therapy for risk reduction. But in fact, there is significant risk reduction if used within, as you say, that window of opportunity. Yeah, and I think the other thing is looking at the type of HRT is really important. So certainly in the UK, in my, in my practice, we give a lot of transdermal 17 beta estradiol. Um, so there's no VTE risk with it, obviously, which is very good. But estradiol is the really important hormone that works very well on our endothelial 
function. We know that it works as a vasodilator as well, which is obviously good. It can lower blood pressure. But if you look at the way it acts on the endothelium, it can inhibit some of the um, cytokines that are sort of toxic, if you like, for this atherosclerosis of fatty deposits. So it can damp down this response. It can also increase nitric oxide, which is really important, and possibly cyclin as well, which um, acts as vasodilators. So it has some really important facts and really um, it's very different to oral estrogen, which is broken down to different types of estrogen, which can be more pro-inflammatory and not so nice, if you like, and friendly on the endothelium. The other thing is we know that women who have a womb <clears throat> still need to have a type of progesterone. We use over here a lot of the micronized progesterone, the body identical progesterone, as you know, the WHI study and other studies have used the synthetic progestogens. Now, you, you look at, you compare women who've been on estrogen only HRT to women who have combination HRT containing a progestogen, their risk of cardiovascular disease increases. And we know that the synthetic progestogens are associated with an increased risk of cardiovascular disease as well as clot. So it's not all estrogen that's to blame with any of this as well. So I think it's really important when you're looking at women over the age of 60 or more than 10 years from their menopause. A lot of people are very cautious about starting HRT in these women, but certainly I, I'm sure we've got very little really good evidence that giving low doses of transdermal estradiol with micronized progesterone to these women probably still does have some cardiovascular benefit. And certainly we know low doses of estradiol has, has bone protection, which is really important as well. So, but it's looking at the overall picture. Anything we can do in medicine to reduce cardiovascular risk is really important for our patients. So you mentioned hypertension. So let's talk about hypertension and the use of menopausal hormone therapy. Does the hypertension mean that we should not be using menopausal hormone therapy? Yeah, which is such a great question because it comes up so often and I, I and so many women are refused because they're hypertensive. As you know, during the menopause, perimenopause, menopause, and I, thereafter, women are more likely to have hypertension. And also they're more likely to uh, become overweight, less likely to exercise, so that could increase blood pressure as well. We know that um, using transdermal estradiol with micronized progesterone is either neutral on blood pressure, or some studies have shown it's actually beneficial on blood pressure. The NICE menopause guidance say that if a woman has cardiovascular risk factors, we should address these, but we don't need to delay giving HRT. So certainly um, in my practice, and, and I think it's quite standard practice really, is give women HRT. If their blood pressure is very high, then certainly we could give an antihypertensive as well. But we actually find that usually in practice, any hypertension or borderline hypertension improves partly because of HRT, but partly because women tend to feel better. So they're more likely to exercise, they're more likely to eat better. And actually what's really important is they're more likely to sleep. And we know that poor sleep is associated with hypertension and cardiovascular risk. So it's really important looking at everything we also know that a lot of women get very worried about their symptoms. They worry they've got dementia or clinical depression or fibromyalgia um, or even long COVID at the moment. And so actually there's a lot of anxiety and that's gonna push people's blood pressure up as well. So just to be given a bit of time and if the right diagnosis have been told about HRT and also how safe HRT is, um, then actually that can be very reassuring and even those things can lower blood pressure as well. So before I let you go, a word about lifestyle and the fact that it's never too late in menopause to think about lifestyle. Absolutely. We did a study recently. I've got a not-for-profit company looking at doing research and education. And we, we did a questionnaire of 3,000 women. And we found that only 24% had been given any information about lifestyle. And certainly, as you know, menopausal hormonal therapy, HRT, is really important for the majority of women. But for every single woman, lifestyle is really important. There's no point us taking um, hormones and sitting on the sofa, not doing any exercise and eating chips myself every night we have to look at the bigger picture and certainly it's paramount when we think about cardiovascular disease as healthcare practitioners seeing women who require reassurance um what piece of advice do you have for them when it comes to menopausal hormone therapy and cardiovascular disease 
I think there's a couple of things. I think one of the things is really important is um, allowing women to understand how important cardiovascular disease is, because I think people think it's more happening to men, not women. Knowing the severity, it's a lot more severe, as I said at the beginning, in women than men if they have a heart attack. But it's also knowing, um, even women who've had breast cancer, commonest cause of death in women who've had breast cancer is cardiovascular disease. We need to sort of get a way of associating menopause or hormonal therapy with breast cancer. We need to think about the benefits rather than just concentrating on any potential risks which we can, you know, have been debated for so long. But actually, we've got real science, real evidence showing that cardiovascular benefits of menopause hormonal therapy are real and, and it's good evidence as well. So we need to really educate women and reassure them actually about it. We often talk about the fact that it's that window of opportunity, the first decade with which we treat, but in women who are on menopausal hormone therapy reaching their mid sixties, should there be a mandatory stop? Absolutely not. And I saw someone in my clinic this morning who was told, you're 62 now, our policy and our practice is 60, you must stop. And there is confusion because of this window of opportunity. People see the word 60 and think, this is it, we can't have our hormones back. I cannot ever imagine having someone with a hypothyroidism withdrawing their thyroxin when they come to a certain age. And actually we know that in the first year of stopping menopause hormonal therapy, there's an increased risk of cardiovascular disease as well as stroke as well. So we really need to be questioning why we're stopping. If women are stopping it because the HRT isn't suiting them or they're getting side effects, we should be changing the dose and type. We shouldn't be stopping it because of the risks. And also there's an accelerated bone turnover as well. Um, so there's very few women actually who should stop taking HRT. Well, thank you so much for joining us today.